Hello, hello, hello. This is uh, Anthony Phillips Primer again. Uh, mainly because the old one was old and two, I had some of my own music on it and copyright strike my own music. It's complicated. <laughs> and so I thought I'd do this again. Um, we'll go back, back, back in time. Through is Anthony Phillips. Anthony Phillips was the original guitarist with Genesis. Um, he went to Charterhouse. He's with that lot. And then he left. He left. Oh, we can hear the rain pitter pattering on the window. Um, but of all the of all the uh, alumni from that band, his back catalogue is probably the one that's is either oft forgotten or overlooked. And I think you know there's some interesting pieces in there. There's a lot of it, so we're going to have to go at breakneck speed. Some albums I'll dwell on. Sam albums I'm going to skip over okay especially ones I can't remember listening to because there are a lot there are a lot of them first one up Geese and the Ghost original release March 1977 now this is the this is the one if there's one you have to listen to it is this one because this is probably the closest to what Genesis might have sounded like if Anthony Phillips had stayed there um and yeah, so I'm just, sorry, the dog was just looking at me and making a noise, you know, you know what it's like. I'll edit that out. But yeah, it was the it was the closest would you you could get to what would Genesis have sounded like if Phillips had remained. And again, it's a very pastoral album. The cover the the the, the, the cover itself kind of gives away what the records are about. Um uh, by Peter Cross, Peter Crosskin did a lot of a lot of these covers, early covers, and they have a they have a very interesting. I, I just like looking at them. Um, again, the interesting thing about who plays on this, you have a lot of people from well from uh, from his orbit. You have Mike Rutherford on here, Phil Collins, uh, John Hackett. Um, so yeah, it's a real it's a real prog prog classic. Uh, open again. There, there are many versions because <laughs> there, there was a recently. A, when when I say recently, a few years back, there was an updated version with the surround sound mix. Well worth checking out if you're into that kind of thing. Also comes with a lovely booklet which tells you the story of how it all how it all um, began. Again, for me, this is a very special album because it was one of those albums that I found early on 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 my journey, as it were. And I hold a special place in my heart for it because again I followed Anthony Phillips's career. Again, ooh, somebody likes me. Um, I followed his career. Luckily, back in those days, I could I, I picked up a lot of his vinyl, you know, in the shops that you can actually buy um, his his vinyl records. So I got them back in the day, back in the the late night, uh, late eighties, early nineties. And yeah, you've got some really nice extended pieces um, like Henry Portraits from Tudor Times and the title track Geese and the Ghost. You also have some really cool songs like Which Way the Wind Blows and um, God If I Saw Her Now, sung by Phil Collins. Yeah, Phil Collins doing the singing. Um, it's a delightful record. It truly is a delightful and wonderful record. And I can't impress on you how is important it is that you go and listen to it immediately. Go now. Run. In fact, stop watching this video and go and listen to that record. So anyway, that was followed by Wise After the Event, released May 1978. Now this record, um, it's a different. It has a completely different feeling to um, the Geese and the Ghost. Yeah, there's still there's still pastoral elements in there. Um, but it's more. Uh, they, they, these are songs. These are songs with words and lyrics. And Anthony Phillips sings. Yeah, Anthony Phillips sings. And I wouldn't say his singing is the best thing, but he does what <laughs> what's needed to be done. Um, again, features some interesting interesting folk. Michael Giles plays drums on this. Uh, Mel Collins appears. Uh, Ru Rupert Hine. Uh, again, he passed um, this year appears on the record so yeah there's some there's some interesting 
interesting people appearing on it. Am I a fan of it? Oh, oh God, this is a tricky one. Part of me, again, it's I, I wouldn't I I wouldn't say I'm drawn to it. It's okay. It's just okay. I think some of the I think some of the songs just are a bit leaden. You know, they don't work. There are a lot of words pushed in. You know, it's I don't think this is good songwriting. <laughs> but you know, it has a certain quality to it that I enjoy. But it's not an album I go back to. Again, the expanded version um, that was released in 2016 has bonus tracks and whatnot. Um, uh, you know, the usual early mixes and, and rough takes. So there's also a surround mix of that, which I think that's the one that doesn't have any uh, doesn't have any bass guitar in it, if I remember. So yeah, uh, this is followed by Private Parts and Pieces, 1978. Uh, released in November that year, um, and and this one I, again I've got fond fond memories on of because these are the the offcuts. He started doing um, I mean they they I guess they're kind of demos, uh, and and this is the first one in that series, and they all they all follow the uh, private parts and pieces tagline. Again, he's he's being a bit rude. Private parts. See see what he's doing. See what he's doing. Private parts. So, hoo -hoo, hee -hee, hoo -hoo. That's what going to the chart house get, gets you, um, but yeah, you get um, the, the it's, a, it's a it's a nice collection, uh, ten uh, spread over ten tracks, and you have various pieces, you know, twelve string classical guitar, um, piano, uh, and it's a variety of instrumental pieces, very very home homespun. I think in one of the tracks, is it seven long years? You can actually hear the radio in the background. You can hear cricket. I think it's cricket on the radio or something. Um, but my favourite track on this is a track called Reaper. And if you could go and listen to that, you can probably see how that has influenced my awful music. Um, but yeah, this album is a one that, again, even though it's fragments of pieces, I have a lot of time for. And I used to play it a lot back in the day. An important record for me. This is followed by Sides from 1979, um, released in April that year. Uh, again, this is more of a rocky, more of a your traditional proggy, rocky kind of thing. Has some interesting players on it. Again, Michael Giles, John G. Perry, uh, Mel Collins, Morris Pert, uh, Rupert Hind again, and of course Pete, Peter Cross does the, does the artwork. Um, yeah, I mean, I like this one. I actually enjoy this one, even though some of it's a bit hokey. Uh, uh, I enjoy this one a lot better than otherwise after the event. Um, it's more poppy. It's um, it's good fun. Features the lyrics of Martin Hall on Holy Deadlock. Martin Hall um, worked with Peter Gabriel. There was a there was a conjunction there. I think he co-wrote. Was it Excuse Me with Peter Gabriel? Um, so. That's a, that, that's interesting. Um, Omanar's good fun. Uh, side doors kind of funky. Holy Deadlock is very wry and a bit dry, dry humoured. Uh, best track on the record has to be Nightmare, uh, which features some fantastic drumming, and I really, really do, really do like it. Um, yeah, I've got a fondness for that one. Again, it's not perfect. But I'm fond of this. Again, the expanded 2016 mix has loads of demos and instrumental mixes and 7 inches. And there's also a surround sound mix as well on the DVD. And that's the one you need to go and get, obviously, because you get more for your money. Uh, 1980s Private Parts 2 Back to the Pavilion, released 28th of April of that year. Uh, again, this is another one for me that... I used to listen to an awful lot. It's like I said, part of the private parts and pieces section, and so the, these tracks, you know, weren't always you know meant to be heard. They're kind of demos. Features some interesting people again: Andy McCulloch, Mike Rutherford, and Mel Collins appear, uh, and Rupert Hine helps out with the production. Starts on off with the Scottish Suite, which is uh, which was I think it was wasn't it originally it was originally written for uh, a Macbeth uh, adaptation and it's got some of the best stuff on here. It's got Salmon Leap which is great 
and it has an electric reaper which is reaper but done with electric guitars which I really like um, and then the rest of the album like I say these are little fragments of pieces some one of the tracks is is a track played backwards it's I just, I just find it charming I find it charming I love the homespun nature of it and again this is another album that was important uh, for me and got me into the idea of just recording and recording and recording and you know and documenting things um, so yeah I remember and I just love the album uh, album artwork as well by Pete Cross um, you know it's one of those albums that has got lots of little messages in and you know he's he's very it's very very good and it's a great it's a great record not for everyone not for everyone but uh, I like it <laughs> but not for everyone. I still want to know though, how side two got a massive scratch on it. How did that happen? And it's a proper scratch. I didn't do it. So who did it? Very annoyed about that. It's one of my favorite records. Uh, in 1981, we have the uh, strangely titled 1984, uh, which was released in June of that year. Uh, this one I have a big problem with because it's, uh, it's Anthony Phillips going synth. The site. He goes synth on this. And again, it's based on uh, George Orwell's book, 1984, and that's why we have the the cage on the cover, you know, for the spoiler for the end piece where you know Winston Smith is tortured with a rat in a cage on his face. Hey, uh, my problem, main problem with this, and again, I've, I've reviewed these, is the music doesn't really say 1984 to me. It's a bit too upbeat in places. Um, and I just, yeah, it's not good synthesizer music. I like synthesizer music, but I don't. I just find it hard. I find it very, very hard to get through. Bits of it I like, like the Prelude, and there's, like I say, bits of it, but it's, it just goes on a bit, you know, it goes on a bit. Again, the expanded version has some different mixes and the surround sound mix, and despite Andy Phillips playing on it, it Morris Pert appears with uh, percussion and so does Richard Scott and it's the first one to not feature Pete Cross's artwork which is a bit of a shame because I like that one uh, <laughs> um, and then we have another Private Parts and Pieces this is uh, Antiques Private Parts and Pieces 3 Antiques with um, oh it's released in March 1982 not that means anything but it was um, a co- written album with Enrique Barro Garcia and again it's a instrumental album 12 string 6 string acoustic guitars yeah very pleasant um, bits of it I enjoy bits of it uh, uh, it's not one of my favorites but it's not a bad record it's just not one of my favorites you know it's not wacky it's not weird and wacky enough um, but there are some nice pieces on there um, for you to uh, to check out. I think it lacks focus. I think that's the main problem. Um, oh, here we go. This is uh, Invisible Men. <laughs> in the UK released 13th of April 1984 in October, October 1983 for the US. And oh, I can't. I don't like this one. <laughs> I don't like at all I don't know what to say it's it's um, isn't it a co-write is it a co-write with Richard Scott I'm not sure I'm not sure yeah I think yeah Scott is uh, Richard Scott is uh, a big factor in this he plays uh, and sings on it um, I just don't like it <laughs> I just don't like it I wish I could. I wish I could like it. Again, there's some interesting bits. It's notable uh, that I think this one had a, 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 a song banned because it had a song on it called Exocet. And this is coming after the Falklands War, where the Exocet missile was responsible for ships being, you know, going down. And uh, yeah, it got it got them banned. It got a ban. A little bit of trivia there, but it's not one that I'm interested in. By all means, you spend your time listening to it. I prefer not to. But then in April 1984 comes the wonderful Private Parts and Pieces 4, A Catch at the Tables. Um, again, instrumental um, album. Apart from 
was it Sistine at the end? And it's got some of my favourite pieces on there. Lights on the Hill, I just think is wonderful. It's a 12 string guitar and a drum machine. I just really, really like it. Earth Man, again, is another one I like. Um, again, this is a very inspirational record for me. Bouncer, oh God, on side two. Really enjoy that one. Um, yeah, it's a really good, I, I really like it. You might not. There you go. <laughs> But uh, I, I like it because uh, we have a, quite a few of these uh, private parts and pieces now. Uh, that was followed up in 1985 with uh, private parts and pieces 12, uh, number five in the series. Um, and that is a compilation of six string and 12 string um, uh, pieces that are meant to represent months of the year. It's okay, it's very pleasant. I wouldn't say it's essential. It's pleasant enough. If you like the the acoustic murmurings of Phillips, you'll get a lot from it. Though if you're not if you're not in that mood, skip ahead. Two private parts and pieces six Ivory Moon released January 1986, uh, and this um, he goes the other way. He puts the he puts um, he puts the guitar down. <laughs> he puts the guitar. Guitar is put down, and he has a whole album of piano music, um, which is again is quite is quite different. I mean, you've heard you hear his piano and his synthesizer work on previous albums, but this is you know dedicated acoustic you know piano uh, material. Um, I think some of it was meant to be part of a, a, a musical adaptation of Masquerade. There was a book in the eighties, Masquerade by Kit Williams, and you had to find the silver hair. It was a puzzle book. The artwork, I guess it could be comparable to Peter Cross. Um, but I remember as a kid, everyone's going on about, will they find the will they find the treasure? And um, I don't know if they ever did. Uh, so, yeah. But that never happened. But you, there's a couple of tracks of Tara's theme and Moonfall, which are from, from that proposed album. But it never happened. That <laughs> never happened. And on the back, um, there's a picture of Phillips taken by Pete Cross during a cricket game at Hambledon in Hampshire, Hambledon Hill, uh, Gordon Haskell. Everything's connected, possibly, or well, well, maybe not. Uh, the more most one of the more interesting ones follows. It's released in August 1987. This is Private Parts and Pieces Seven, Slow Waves, Soft Stars. Uh, I remember the first time I got this, I had it on cassette. Fascinating. I had it on cassette because that's all that's all you could get it on. And in a few years back, well, when we was we was living here, so it must have been in the last six years when we first came here, I saw a copy on eBay on vinyl, and I thought I'll buy that. And it was a bit expensive. I didn't. It was one of those purchases where we went, yeah, I haven't got that, and I just did buy it now, and I forgot about it. And when it arrived, it arrived sealed with its original cellophane on it. And so you know, I'd open. I was opening a, a record that was you know sealed for like nearly 30 years 30 years sealed up oh, I, was, I was a bit giddy like a schoolgirl. I was a bit giddy I was the interesting thing about this one is we go yeah we're still in the world of the keyboards um, but we're doing synthesizers now I mean there are some there are some 8 string and 12 string guitars on here and classical um, but it's largely synthesizer based and there are themes um, there's a whole um, ice flight section which is I quite enjoy. Um, again, if you like that new age synthesizer stuff that happened in the 80s, you will like this. If you don't, obviously you don't. Darren's being obvious, but I have to speak in obvious. I have to be obvious, otherwise you wouldn't necessarily understand what I'm getting at because we're talking about music. you know. Um, but it is interesting. If you like um, early synthesizer music and, like I said, that more, um, that more esoteric over there, textural more, more textural kind of synthesizer stuff this is interesting because you get to hear the jupiter 8 uh the arp 2600 the polymoog i'm reading from the wikipedia page because i couldn't be bothered to get my vinyl version out to read what was played on it um and enrique barrow garcia also turns up on guitar on two of the tracks so um yeah i, I like it um it's i find it a bit different because of the synthesizers so um, yeah I think it's well worth 
checking out. Um, 1988 saw the release of Tarka, which is based on Tarka the Otter, and is a co-write with Harry Williamson, the son of... Um, uh, I'm going to have to click on the button now to look at it. <laughs> um, he's the son of Henry Williamson, who wrote uh, Tarka the Otter, funnily enough. Um, and... Uh, who's it? Who, who helped with the money? Was it Susan George and Simon McCorkindale, I believe? Again, I haven't got my copy to hand. Um, helped with the financing of the record, and I remember this one. This one actually made it into the local walls. This was this one was in the record racks of walls. They really pushed this one. I don't think anyone bought it. I did. Bought it on CD. Um, I got the I got the vinyl version. Yeah. Um, I haven't listened to it in ages, but I remember enjoying it very much at the time. And again, it's very pastoral, you know, evocative of the English countryside and and the subject matter. And it's uh, yeah, it's it's a very pleasant album. Um, then we go to the Missing Links Volume One finger painting. Uh, the Missing Links uh, section uh, of albums that phalange. Um, it's like TV work, um, TV themes and bits and bobs, incidental music for TV, library music. Um, again, you can skip these ones. You don't have to listen to them. I remember the one, the copy I bought, finger painting. I bought it on CD and I bought it on mail order. I had to send a check off. Who remembers checks? Who remembers writing out a check? Uh, I had to send a check, uh, <laughs> pay the postage. And 28 days later, it turned up. Those were the days. You tell kids that. They go, well, what's, they go, what's a CD? Uh, this is followed by uh, Slow Dance, uh, released 24th September 1990. Um, and he finds himself with a record deal with Virgin Records on the Venture record label. The Venture record label was meant to be more the esoteric material. And Slow Dance, you could say, is his tubular bells. It's probably not a fair comparison, but it's because there are it's two pieces of music, you know, on both sides of the of the album. Uh, so I don't know if it's a fair comparison. You have slow dance part one and part two. Funny thing is, back in the time, uh, back in the early nineties, um, when uh, when Thames lost their contract, ITV Thames lost the contract to run ITV, and it moved over to Carlton. Carlton used to use. Um, bits of this album as its incidental music when the continuity announcer came on to announce what the next program was going to be, and it was the bed music for you know promos of of TV shows. So that was good. Um, I really enjoy it. Again, it takes me to a time and a place. Um, we had it on cassette. I used to play it in the car. With the missus used to have it on. We used to go out for night nighttime drives in the car when when she first started to drive, and we'd have this on. And it was just kind of a, that's a memory. It's just a memory I have of it. Um, I really enjoy it. I can't imagine everyone will because it's a, you know, it's a little bit, you know, <laughs> it's a little bit safe, you know. But I enjoy it. And they released it in 2017 with a DVD within surround sound and extra bonus tracks because you got to have the bonus tracks. So that's what you get. Um, yeah, I, I I have a lot of time for it because it it reminds me of a time, but I don't expect everyone else to to enjoy it. Uh, private parts and pieces, I've got to add it up now. Five, six, seven, eight. Good job I know my no Roman numerals. New England, uh, released August nineteen ninety two. Though I don't think it was August nineteen ninety two because I bought it on the day of release and I was at college. Uh, well, it was no. It was actually. It was like I was at Polytechnic then. I told you the story of me going to Ealing College. I went to Ealing College where all the all the rock stars went, but it was a college, and then the next year it turned to a Polytechnic, and then the following year it became a university. So I've been to college, Polytechnic, and university. If ever there's a Trivial Pursuit question about me, you know what the answer is. <laughs> And I was at I was at, at Polytechnic uh, when this was released. And I, anyway, I rushed across town to go and get this 
from Virgin Megastore, wherever it was, and then rushed back. And of course, there's always train delays. And so I remember just bursting into the classroom. I was about five minutes late and you know, everyone gave me a bit of a bad look. And uh, yeah, oh, I think the missus was trying to burst in there. So yeah, um, so that's how I know. It was, um, it was definitely not August 1992 because I got it on the day of release. So that's wrong. <laughs> anyway, I've gone completely off topic. I really like this record. It is probably his most focused album uh, after, well, The Geese and the Ghost. Uh, he, he takes those ideas and the nature of the Pro Pass and Pieces albums and the other records he's done and he distills it into a truly wonderful record. It really is good. It's 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 got everything on there. Um, we've also got Martin Robertson doing soprano saxophone and African drums. He re the, the saxophone on this really lifts it. And we also have Joji Hirota uh, playing percussion as well. And he's a, an important figure in, in the percussion world. And um, Phillips and Hirota did more collaborations together. And it's got a great Peter Cross album sleeve as well. And I think I've still got my original copy on the shelf over there somewhere. It's over. It's over. It's around there somewhere. It's probably a bat over it. Um, because it takes me takes me to a point. And it's 64 minutes 43 seconds. And do you know what? It's not too long. It really isn't. It's one of those weird records that I can actually get through. Um, I really like it. I really do. Uh, 1994 sees Sail the, Sail the World. There was a, a, a TV show, Meridian, uh, it's an ITV company, uh, did a show called Sail the World. Uh, where they, that was the job choking. I'm going to cough. I'll, I'll leave this in. And and yeah, and it's in, it's the incidental music to, to that. So if you can imagine music to ships cutting through the waves and the spray and marine life and the, you know, the, the salty ozone smell pervading your hairy nostrils, um, then that's what Sail of the World is. You can skip it, it's not essential. Missing Links Volume 2 Sky Road, out in 1994 as well. Again, more of the same. Uh, I think I enjoyed it more than finger painting. Uh, Gypsy Suite 1995 with Harry Williamson is uh, it's a it's almost like a it's like a different mix of Tarka. A lot of it is based on Tarka, I believe. Um, again, long time since I've listened to it. 1995 seems sees the Living Room concert. That was a radio show um, live performance that was put out. It's been recently reissued, exp expanded. Um, yeah, well worth picking up um, because you hear Anthony Phillips doing his thing live, and you don't very you don't hear him do live material very often, so it's well worth it. Uh, Meadows of Englewood, nineteen ninety six. I have heard this album, but I have no memory of it. That's it. I've heard it. I forgot to I forgot to rip it, but I have no memory of it. And that's the problem with a lot of these later albums, is they get a little bit, for me, forgetful, you know, private parts and pieces. Uh, nine, Dragonfly Dreams, again with en uh, Enrique Barrow Garcia. Very pleasant, but um, kind of just washed over me. Washed over me. You know, Missing Links Volume 3, Time and Tide with Joji Hirota. Like I said, they worked on this um yeah if you like percussion it's it's interesting it's different but again you know it's not one album that i go back to but um yeah i mean what can i say yeah just trying to remember it yeah i think yeah give it a go because of the because of the percussion it's terrible, isn't it? Terrible, that one. Live radio sessions with Guillermo Casanave. Again, like um, like the living room concert, uh, worth checking out because he's doing his thing live. Private Parts and Pieces 10, Soiree 1999. 
Yeah. yeah. I didn't. Uh, wasn't that interested in it. I didn't. I didn't find it that interesting. <laughs> Radio Clyde, two thousand and three. Uh, even though it was actually recorded in nineteen seventy eight. Again, it's it's another live kind of performance thing. Not as not as good as a living room concert, but you know. I want to get through because it's we getting it's very long. Field Day two thousand and five. This is a double. Um, this is a double album. And again, this was a surprise at the time because, you know, he hadn't released anything for a while, and it was all, uh, twelve string and six string acoustic material. Um, enjoyed it at the time. You know, it's it's a very pleasant record. Again, probably too much of it. Which is the same criticism I'll give of his most recent uh, release, um, but again, it was the time, and so you kind of grateful that you got it. I remember listening to it um, a lot when we was used to have used to have Saturday evenings having food and cooking and, and eating and drinking wine. <laughs> you know, those were before the kids came along, and um, you know, and I, I remember having it on and just you know chewing the fat and drinking. And talking to the missus and just you know it being on in the background and it's that kind of music. It's nice, pleasant, middle class uh, dinner party background music. Not that we ever have dinner parties, but it was just me and the missus. So you know, um, Wildlife 2007 with Joji Hirota. Uh, again, you know, it's kind of you know I've kind of um, I don't know. <laughs> There's a, it's a, it's a, there's a lot there. How long is it? Does it say? I know there's a, it's a big album. It's like 45 tracks. And um, yeah, uh, this is this is all. Is this from? Yeah, this is all from the British Survival. Uh, there's oh god, yeah. You, again, people outside the UK won't remember this, but Survival was a very big nature program when I was a kid. It was on ITV. And again, I was listening to Anthony Phillips and not realising it because he had recorded a lot of the the, the background music, a lot of the, the, the music for Survival. And this um, takes a number of those pieces from that series um, and the, from the BBC series Natural World and uh, compiled it onto this. Again, it's TV music. It's, it's pleasant, but you know what TV music is. It's just meant to be there to, you know, give some sort of um, atmosphere to the pictures. Without the pictures, eh, you know, sound like, eh. <laughs> uh, Missing Links Volume 4, Pathways and Promenades. Again, it's, eh. There's a lot of music. And the, the later albums, I'm like, yeah, it's, I, we did this. Because it's very, it's very samey, you know. It's very samey. That's not to say it's bad. I just don't get anything from it. Um, Head of the field of music for TV and film, twenty ten. Again, more TV music. Yeah, it's TV music. What do you want me to say? <laughs> Without the pictures, it's only half a thing. <laughs> I mean, there are very few. There are very few like themes that you can listen to. Chariots of fire. You can you can listen to that and the and the, the the imagery will appear in your in your head. You know, two thousand and one, space odyssey, and thus sprack Zarathustra. You know, or the blue Danube. You you can get the images there. But if I play you something from ahead of the field, you you it won't conjure anything <laughs> because it's TV music. Seventh Heaven, twenty twelve, with Andrew Skeet. I did review it. It's pleasant. I was not interested. It. Just, phew. yeah, not for me. Private Parts of Pieces 11, City of Dreams from 2012. Again, it was all right, but I felt no urge to return to it, um, which is a shame. <laughs> and then Strings of Light 2019 is his most recent release. Follows very much, it's almost like the sequel to Field Day. Um, you get a lot for your money, um, but... It's a big mill. Do we need all this stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's great what he's doing. But a lot of the time I felt he was just letting his fingers do the walking. You know, he's just following his fingers. Um, and if you know, if you play guitar, you know what I mean by that. 
you know it's i didn't feel that again it, it felt unfocused and there was a lot of it but again because he doesn't put albums out that often you know like this you're kind of grateful that you got it but it's not a record i'd necessarily go back to and put on maybe if i was having one of those dinner parties and i was sick of listening to field day i might put strings of light on but to sit down and, and get through two cds of um acoustic guitar material um nah i can't i can't be i can't be doing with that um, and so we come that's it that, I've, I've covered the basic discography uh, there are a number of compilations probably the best one um, recently is Halves of the Heart don't be confused with the 1985 version there have been quite a few Andy Phillips compilations but Harvest of the Heart is a, in, a, in a book you know one of those book style compilations uh, and that was released in 2014 and that gives you a really good overview of he, all of his music Um and again, there have been uh, the Private Parts and Pieces box sets as well and Missing Links box sets reissued. So it pulls all that stuff in. And if you want a nice big meal, those box sets do a good job of it and you get lots of bonus tracks as well. Um, so yeah, that is the work of Anthony Phillips. He's an artist I hold dear to my heart because he's a fine guitarist. Though, you know, the stuff I loved of his is long ago you know I'm, I still like your football team you still support them you know what I'm saying and I still have a lot of love for him because um, he's playing it's like him and Hackett and Oldfield people like that really really influenced my early playing and you know what I like doing uh, so yeah he's an artist that I've got a lot of time for and he's like I say, of the of the of the Genesis musicians, he is the one who's probably the most overlooked because he's just been burbling away doing his own thing for all these years. And yeah, do check him out. Do check him out. And there's loads of ways in that you can you can do this. I'm sure he's even on Spotify now if you wanted to go that way. Um Oh, another text message, is it? Oh no. Oh, London to move to tier three restrictions immediately. Um, that will date this video for this is the year 2020 the year of the pandemic anyway thank you for watching sorry I had to do this again but that's just because I can't use my own music in my videos anymore there will be a time when all the uh, uh, all the stinkhorn uh, track will be flagged as a copyright infringement and that will disappear but anyway that's the copyright for you uh hopefully you've enjoyed this uh i probably need to i probably need to do these again with some of the other people because they probably need updating hopefully you've enjoyed it thank you for watching uh there's only one more thing left to say and by now you should know what that is and that is ta -da.